All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Kansas City by John Schramm. How are you doing, John? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and John is a successful entrepreneur, 25 years experience leading business uh, technology services and and he now leads the Kansas City team in the marketing efforts of the Purple Guys. And what we are going to talk about today is driven by purple. Okay. And as you can see from <laughs> John's background, there he has many shades of purple there. So yeah. um, without, without any further ado, John, do you want to uh, explain what purple is all about? Well, I'll, I'll describe the purple and tell you how we came up with the brand because I'd like to claim it as my own idea, but it was not. I'm not that smart. <laughs> so uh, we started 20 plus years ago uh, out as an IT support company. We're still an IT support company. Uh, we had hired an ad agency to come up with a logo and a name. Uh, the only thing I knew that I wanted was I wanted my logo to be purple because way back when I came up with the idea with purple pens that write in purple ink. So this is one of our pens. Uh, so when I started this business, I knew I wanted the purple logo so I could keep my purple pen. I uh, didn't use it for anything but the logo with the purple pen to start with. About a year into the business, sat down in a meeting, had six people in the meeting from the company. We all had a different colored logoed shirt on for the meeting. Uh, my wife happened to also be in that meeting. We left the meeting and she said, this is silly. We look like a bunch of Skittles. Pick a color mm -hmm. and have a uniform. Uh, so, you know, we had purple as logo color. I decided, all right, I'm going to get purple shirts. So I took all the other shirts back, got everybody purple shirts. And within two weeks, our customers started referring to us as, hey, the purple guys are here. And so that is actually how the purple guys was born, how the brand was born. It was, it was our customers. And I was attentive to enough to realize, all right, if you're going to call me the purple guys, that's better than a lot of other things you could call me. Uh, and the, uh, the name stuck and it has been a fantastic branding vehicle since then. Well, I think, I think what's interesting, what you just outlined there, because in some ways you just, uh, it's an analogy for, many companies out there that maybe they do spend a lot of money on brandy maybe they do have a, a what they think is a uniform brand but how they communicate it is very different from mm -hmm. one person or one department to another and so um yeah i i think when you said everybody wearing different color shirts is kind of an analogy for many companies that they think yeah. that brand they think that branding uh is simply the logo or the color and it's not right yeah, a lot of people really have no concept. And I, and I get it because small business, you're scrambling for whatever you can. And if something appears to be working, you're going to run with it. Uh, but the concept of brand applies to a, it really applies to a solopreneur. I mean, you have a personal brand and it scales all the way up to Coca-Cola uh, and you can spend money at the Coca-Cola level, or you can spend money and focus at the personal level. But, but the brand is way more than the logo and the name. Uh, and just understanding that concept is, is key. And you have your tagline there, whatever, stress-free um, IT, uh, IT support. And yes. I think that's the thing is, is the brand attributes are something, again, that I think people sometimes overlook and sort of say, okay, I get, you, you know, you got, your, you got your logo and you got your colors and all of that. But what does it actually stand for at the end of the day? I think that's yeah. the piece that people often overlook. And from your point of view, like from, from the purple guys, what does your brand stand for? Well, a brand, and you, you hit it on the head with our tagline. So it took a lot of work to figure out, all right, what, what, who are we? What do we do? And at the end of the day, we're, we're an IT support company. But what we really are is we're a customer service company that happens to deal with technical issues. Now, we deal with a lot of technical issues and a lot of technical things, and especially all the security stuff that's going on today. But distilling that down to you know, what do we stand for? We try to make technology stress-free, which a lot of people in my company actually roll their eyes. They're like, that's impossible. We deal with the stress all day. I'm like, I know, but that's our job is to take that stress away and own it. Uh, and then we, you know, we added the characters a few years back. So technology can be kind of a scary, daunting thing. There's a lot of business owners that look at it this just kind of this black box that data comes and goes out of this thing with blinky lights and we don't really get it. 
And also there's all these cyber criminals out there trying to steal my stuff and hold it for ransom. So that's scary. So, you know, we're trying to have a brand that's approachable, that's memorable, that is easy to understand and also easy to engage with. So the color makes it memorable. The tagline makes it, you know, kind of tells you what we're trying to do. Uh, the characters stick in your mind. You can tell a lot of funny stories with characters that you can't really tell any other way. So we've extended all of that. Uh, and again, as a small business, that, that takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. And, and really, it takes a tremendous amount of effort to make it simple. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and, and as we know, simple doesn't quite too easy either. But uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> make, yeah. Um, one of the one of the interesting things that you know you just touched on there is you know technology is stressful to a lot of people and there's so many changes and things are changing rapidly mm -hmm. more rapidly than ever. Um, is that uh, almost almost what your 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 brand and your message is saying is something that is almost counterintuitive to most people? So I think that's probably one way that it it's memorable. They go hmm stress-free IT and they've got this cool kind of strange little dude here um, <laughs> and, and they look like they look like they're fun people they look like they could make yeah. enjoyable that that's all counterintuitive which is great if you can it's a great marketing strategy too if you can yes. create something that intrigues people because it seems counterintuitive yeah and, and you know all small businesses and really anybody that's that's trying to sell a product or a service you want it to be top of mind you want it to be memorable our service in particular tends to be a pain driven decision that mm -hmm. whatever you're doing right now today with your tech support is okay until and it's that when until something happens you get that malware attack you your system's down for two days you can't turn it on uh, that's when I want them to be able to remember, oh, there was that stress-free company, but what they really remember is there's that purple guy I met once. And if you Google purple guy IT or purple IT, we're the only thing that comes up. So again, it's the accidental brand that's been a fantastic, uh, it sticks in your brain. Uh, and, it, it, and then you just repeat, and, and I'm a huge fan of drip marketing. So having a mailing list, sending out good quality content, posting it out on the different platforms, it and like you said, it's it is not it's an easy concept, but it's not easy to do. Yeah. Well, I think you did the, you just hit on something there is like putting out quality content because unfortunately, um, you know, content marketing a lot of people just kind of pay lip service to it or think any yeah. old content will do. I just have to have some content, so yeah. there's a lot of garbage put out there, and I think quality content will always stand out. Yes. Yeah. And there's, and it's also, you know, making sure your content is tailored to your audience mm -hmm. because in, in the tech world, you can really, really, really fast, go really deep in the weeds. And most of the people we're actually trying to reach, it, they're actually not technical people. Actually, almost none of them are technical people. They're the business owner, they're the office manager, they're the CFO or the COO. They want high level business info. And once we're engaged, they want to know we take care of all the details. But from a marketing and a branding perspective, telling them how a spam filter works is it's a waste of their time. Like knowing that they need a spam filter, different deal. So, you know, do you get into the technical jargon or do you explain it in layman's terms so people can, again, understand it? have less stress around it because nobody likes to feel stupid, especially a business owner. I mean, they got into business because they've probably got a little bit of an ego uh, and they're driving things. And so they don't want to have a conversation with you that makes them feel like, well, I don't, they yeah. never want to feel like they're the dumbest person in the room. They don't. Yeah. I mean, nobody really does. So you've, you've got to tailor that messaging to your audience. And, and one thing I, I just would uh, underline there is what you said about knowing your customer, because this is a trap that obviously a lot of people fall into. And I think particularly sometimes technical folks fall into mm -hmm. because they, uh, you, you know, they want to show off their technical prowess. Right. And they mm -hmm. and they also assume that people have a greater uh, level of technical, you know, because everybody should be just as excited about technology as they are. <laughs> Um, but to your to your point, if I'm coming to you, it's because I don't want to think about this stuff. I don't yes. want to learn about because, quite frankly, if I could learn about this stuff, why would I need you in the first place? You know, that's right. That would be yeah. a complete waste of my time because my yeah. focus is not on the technology. So knowing Correct. your customer is key. Yes. 
the, the other thing for us was knowing who we wanted to attract as an employee. And that was a lesson I had to learn. So I actually, a little background on my story, I'm an unintentional serial entrepreneur. My last business was an IT staffing firm. We grew like crazy. I used to be technical. I'm not now. I can talk about it, but I can't do any of it. Uh, and I was actually the in-house IT guy as well as the president of that company. One of the folks that worked for me said, hey, you know, you, you should outsource our IT support. And I was just going to hire somebody. We were an IT staffing firm. And when I reached out to find out if this, uh, if I could outsource something, I, I found a two-man shop. They were outsourced IT and I'd never even heard the concept, but I outsourced my IT support. And that was my introduction to this business. I was buying that service. And, when, and I actually bought their company is how I got into this business. Um, and I thought I knew what we did. And that's when I figured out, I said it earlier on, we're actually a customer service business that happens to deal with the technical support issues. We do have to have technical skills to get our job done. But first and foremost, we got to have customer service skills. Because um, for anybody that remembers the old Saturday Night Live skit with the IT guy on there, he'd sit down with the keyboard, move, type away, fine, it's fixed. And, and there's a lot of those IT people out there, and I used to hire them. Uh, and I realized that's a good way to, to make your customers go away. So, but again, defining your brand, defining who your audience is from a customer perspective is critical, but then defining the kind of uh, personalities you want to have inside your four walls that's going to turn around and interact with those people is just as important. Yeah, and I, I just want to underline that because that's a that's a crucial point uh, there is because, like I said at the beginning, you can have the greatest brand, you can have the greatest messaging and positioning, you can, at the at some levels of your company, you can be living this out, but if you have people in the company or that don't and don't represent the brand in the way that you want to represent it, it's it's unfortunate that that's going to undo everything. It's like you know the weakest link in the chain or whatever. Yeah, and, and yes, from, from the person that answers the phone, because that's a lot of how our requests mm -hmm. still come in is over the phone, even though we're a tech company, we get a lot of people calling on the phone, get a lot of emails. Uh, so just knowing that, I mean, every interaction is a brand interaction. And that's where that consistency comes in. What do your invoices look like? Are they easy to read? Do they come out on time? Uh, the, the help messages that go back, and some of them are automated. So you got to be really careful what you put in an automated message because that can come across as cold. Uh, mm -hmm. It can come across as rude. Uh, so you really got to make sure you're crafting your message in every at every touch point with your customer. Yeah. So when you when you figured this out and you realized that you had to hire a particular skill set, um, what did you um, what what do you look for now in 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 an employee? Uh, well, we use, we use a personality profiling system as part of our hiring process and kind of the personality traits we're looking for. I mean, they do need to have an attention to detail because this is a technical thing. So there's, mm -hmm. there's an attention to detail we're looking for. There's also a pace or patience. So it tends, the customer service skills tend to go down the faster paced the person is. So they can get a lot of stuff done, but they're also going to really be pushing and so that's a fine balance of how are they wired to work? Like, can they, can they slow down? Can they take a breath? Because uh, if they can, that will take the anxiety off. And if they come in with way too much energy, they're just going to escalate the, the tension. Uh, the other thing is, you know, there, there's a certain degree of social ability that we want to have. It's that customer interaction. Um, but we don't necessarily attract extroverts. That's not a thing in the technology world most of the time. Yeah. So we are trying to find that balance of solid communication skills and the, the patient bedside manner. So they're not necessarily going to be the life of the party anywhere, but mm -hmm. on a one-on-one -on -one communication with a customer, which is a lot of what our, our help desk and our remote services interactions look like, they're a calming influence They've got the attention to detail to make sure they're asking the right questions in a calm tone and then following up. And if they said, I'm going to get back to you in two hours, they actually get back to them in two hours. So it's that follow up. So those are the kind of things we're looking for when we're looking for someone specific to our remote services team. 
which by the way, we're hiring. So if anybody out there is listening, we are always hiring and looking for those skill sets. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, hopefully uh, there's a there's great opportunity for anybody watching and listening. Uh, the Purple Guys are hiring. Uh, one interesting thing is, yeah, because let's face it, a lot of our customer ex- our customer service experiences um, have not been the best, right? I mean, a lot of companies have put, you know, um, bumper sticker lo- slogans on their website, like, you know, we're customer centric, and then your your experiences are the opposite. And it right. often feels like what they want to do is get you off the phone and the ticket closed mm-hmm. as fast as possible. So a lot of people come with that baggage. So obviously, that's something that you have to create a big contrast to. Yeah, and it's it's back to that patience. If they call in and they feel like, all right, let me get your problem fixed. I don't, it, there's a certain amount of banter. And there's some people that don't. They just want their problem fixed. They don't want to talk about anything else. Mm-hmm. But that's more rare. You really want to have that personal interaction. Uh, and right now, we don't do a chat like this that they see each other face to face. I'd actually like to do that. Because also, I think that actually helps lower the tension immediately. It's for sure. It's easier to be upset when it's just a voice. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but that is what we're we're trying to accomplish. Is and it's a balance because we got a lot. You know, we we support six hundred and seventy small and mid sized businesses from the Midwest down to the Gulf South. There's a lot of people that depend on us mm-hmm. to make sure their stuff works. So we've got to make sure we do actually get the problem fixed and get them off. The phone yeah. uh, so we get on to the next one because there's always issues happening always people that need support yeah but the important thing obviously is not to make them feel like a ticket to make them feel like a yes person. correct yeah and and the other thing i think is always um interesting as well is that the thing you touched upon there is like the follow-up if you say you get back to them in two hours get back to them in two hours this is something yeah. that i always i always instilled in people is like um, you know, from from our own experiences, right? Uh, the worst thing is when there's n- nothing. You know, you're yeah, waiting on this radio yes. silence. Even if it's even if you get an email to say, just wanted to touch base. We're still working on it. Haven't yes. forgotten about you. I'm good with that. Yeah. I'm just not good with the person who said, I'll call you in two hours. And then they call you in six hours or eight hours yes. and say, Oh, yeah, yeah, we've got a fix now. And you go, Great. I've spent six or eight hours wondering what the heck is going on. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the silence is deafening when it comes to I'm waiting on a response and, and that anxiety level goes up depending on what they were waiting on. And sometimes be sent depending on their job title. Uh, so it's, it's, it, I mean, it, it's the world we live in. It's communication skills are hypercritical to us being successful and communication skills are actually the hardest thing for us to hire. Uh, from the customer service aspect of a technology-based field. Uh, and also to your point there, because it's not just verbal communications, it's written communications. It's, yes. it's, and, it's, and, and, it's, and, it's try, and it's being empathetic in your communication as opposed to just being kind of clinical. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to come across as Dr. Spock on the, yeah. on the other end of the line. <laughs> You, you want to have that empathy and relatability and, Hey, I get it. This is, this is tough. And, and we get the, you know, we get a lot of positive feedback. We've got a tremendous customer service rating and we get comments in that kind of come in on it. I mean, they come out on basically on an hourly basis. They just get a dashboard that is on our wall and you'll get comments. Like you saved my life. I'm like, well, I made it so you could print. I don't really think that qualifies <laughs> as saving your life, but that's the emotional attachment that yeah. people have when they can't print. Yeah. So to your point, if you don't make that emotional connection, you're like, well, this is just a printer. If you start out with that, you're going to send somebody over the edge. So you've yeah. got to know words matter. The attitude matters. Uh, and you know, eventually you do have to fix it, but all of that stuff on the front end is hypercritical. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's all perspective at the end of the day. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's not, it's not life and death, but in the moment Correct. when the printer's not printing and you have something uh-huh. critical, it feels like that. Yeah. Yep, it does. Yeah. Well, listen, this has been fantastic. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, some great, great insight. And there's some, and I would really encourage people who are watching and listening. There's some fantastic nuggets in here about, um, not just creating a, a brand and a message, but also how you live it and how it permeates mm-hmm. everything in your business. And that's and at the end of the day, your customers are going to be the arbiter of whether you get that right or not. Clearly, yes. 
the purple guys are getting it right. So all of John's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, John, please tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Uh, you can reach us at purpleguys.com. So just remember purple and technology when you Google that. But purpleguys.com is the website. We're, we're small business IT support uh, from the Midwest to the Gulf South, currently supporting over 670 small and mid-sized businesses. We are a 150-person organization. We uh, try to have fun every day and take the stress out of dealing with technology. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I, I feel my glass is very boring compared to yours. <laughs> They did actually. Yes. They did yes. actually give me these little colored things. I could have changed them, ah. right? so maybe I should now because yeah. I said I'm feeling very dull compared to you. <laughs> these, these. These were a Valentine's present from my wife, and uh, they're actually my only blue light glasses. So I, I wow. have to. I have to wear them now. I've, I've reached the age that if I'm sitting in front of a computer, uh, I've got to have the magnification and I've got to have the blue light blocking. <laughs> they, they, I, I wasn't. I wasn't really sold on the blue light thing, so I started wearing these. They're. They're great. Oh. Excellent. Well, there's another another <laughs> plug for people. Check out the blue light glasses yes. too. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.